20 wins in his impressive, impressive. career. 15 by KO. We now welcome the UFC heavyweight champ, Stipe Miocic. Stipe, thank you so much for being with us. Sorry, right, thanks for having me. Of course, I like the frames. All right, let's start with UFC 260 this weekend. We're all fired up. You face Francis and Ganu in the main event, a rematch for that heavyweight belt. Stipe, last time it took five rounds. How many rounds this time? You know, I don't know. Um, you know, the sooner the better. Um, come out on skate is always nice. Um, but I'm planning for a war. You know, always, always ready for five rounds, no matter what. That's what I train for. And you know, if it ends early, even better. But you know. I'm going to hit that win no matter what. Steve, thank you for being on the show. This guy, the last eight wins he has is by knockout. The last four is first-round knockouts. Uh, coming into this fight, is that potentially something that you believe can work to your advantage, the fact that this guy has taken everybody out in his last, last three years inside of two minutes, and maybe, just maybe, that can work to your advantage as well? Are you looking at it from that standpoint, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean... It, it, Maybe, I don't know, maybe he feels like he knocked me out quick, um, good, and then, you know, and then he realizes he can't, uh, you know, get some frustrated. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I mean, we're not going to worry about what he's going to do. I'm going to worry about what I do and, you know, impl implement my game plan and uh, get that W. Champ, are you surprised that you're the underdog in this fight? You win the first fight. You, you worked him over pretty good. Um, you were able to withstand his early shots, and you got him on the ground a bunch of times, and you beat him up pretty well. It seemed like his confidence was shot in his next fight against Lewis. He didn't do anything. Yeah, and now yeah. he went back to doing what he's always done, which is knock everyone out early. Meantime, you win a trilogy against one of the best who ever did it and come into the rematch of a fight you won the first time dominant in dominant form as an underdog. Do you have any thoughts about that? No, I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm used to it. Uh, Vegas hates me, uh, so let's keep it at that. I mean, uh, I don't mind being an underdog. I like shutting people up, um, so I just, no, nothing new, honestly. Everybody points to the fact that, obviously, like you, I'm sorry, go ahead, Molly. I apologize. Go ahead, Molly. Okay, real quick, uh, Stipe, I was just going to say we all love the underdog mentality, a good underdog story, even though it doesn't feel like you are one. Uh, I know you're focused on this weekend. I know you're focused on Francis Ngannou, but, but I got to ask you this. John Bones Jones, a lot of people interested moving from lightweight to heavyweight, obviously considered to be one of the greatest of all time, obviously dealt with a lot of adversity and has taken lengths of time off. But how much would you like a shot at Bones Jones in the octagon? Oh, it would be great, but right now my focus is on Saturday, UFC 260. You know, all I care about is Francis. That's all I'm focused on, task at hand, and that's all I care about. Stipe, educate me about this. Considering the fact that you won the first fight, how you won it, by you know, basically taking them to the ground and what have you, because that's what people try to do with a knockout artist. I guess what I'm wondering about, do you think that the same strategy needs to be employed, or do you think going into this fight you'll need to do something a bit different in order to beat Ngannou? No, I'm definitely going to do something different, a uh, different game plan, just because, you know, in this sport, you have to evolve. If you don't evolve, uh, you're going to get passed by. And, uh, you know, he's definitely working on everything. He's working on striking, of course, but he's working on his ground game, his defense, his uh, uh, wrestling. He's doing all that, as, as am I. So, I mean, we both evolved since our last fight. And, uh, you know, he's gotten a lot better, but so have I. Champ, you know, he can work on his cardio, on his conditioning, on whatever. But to me, that's not really the issue, how much, card, how much work you put in in terms of that stuff in a case of a knockout artist who has been upset because your first fight, you upset him. He was the favorite in that fight, too. It's about being able to relax. You can be as in great condition as you want, but you have to be able to relax in there, and, and that experience will, will show. I'm sure you've studied his fights in preparation for this fight. Do you think he will be able to do that? Are you anticipating a guy who's learned from his first fight with you uh, or not? Um, I think he has learned, but unfortunately, he's going to fight me again, and I'm going to bring it out of him again. Um, I'm not going to, you know, be, let him just do what he wants. I'm going to make him feel uncomfortable and make it the whole, the whole fight just not what he wants and just frustrate the crap out of him. Let's go back to that underdog label because you're, you're, you're a slight underdog in this fight. How are you feeling about that, considering the fact that you're the reigning heavyweight champion of the world? Honestly, I, I love it. I mean, usually at this point, um, it seems like it's a, my storyline. <laughs> Every fight I'm the underdog. Um, 
So uh, nothing new. I'm just going to go out there and just do what I do and get that win. Walk out and still. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.